Hi guys, welcome back. So we've got an England squad out for the Barbarians game on Sunday and it bears very little resemblance to the other training squads there have been. But to be fair, players aren't available for semi-finals and finals of the Premiership and Eddie Jones really is just looking at a lot of players. But trying to read from the previous squads into this one has been pretty much impossible and it is proved here. Uh, lots of different names from what we've seen before. So basically, this Barbarians game, just a big audition. Who's going to make that big push to go to Australia? Some of these players are probably already penciled in or penned in to go to Australia for sure. Some are on audition and maybe some are here just for experience. Let me know who do you think is who. And maybe there's even some players who are available for this game who still might go to Australia, like um, Joe Marler, for example. Through admissions, no Alfie Barbary. No McGuigan from Newcastle, the hooker. And I don't know if they're injured or not. I didn't think so, but let me know if they are. If they're not injured, that's a big shock to me and a bit of a shame. And we look at these hookers here and they're all very, very inexperienced with a Blamire the most with six caps. Walker, Singleton, they're all good hookers. Who's got the highest ceiling? Who's got the most potential? I think that's the question for this game. One's obviously going to be very disappointed and miss out, similar to the scrum halves. Then we've got a group of really inexperienced props. Rod, we know a little bit about. Goodrick Clark, Schickling, not much about, uncapped. Collier, we know all about for Harlequins, and many of you guys have been saying he's got to play for England. Here he gets his chance. Davison, a couple of caps. Stewart's the only one there with you know, a decent number of caps with 20, but many of you saying he's not all that. So all to play for with those young props there. Second row is a bit weird. We've got Charlie Yules, of course, and Johnny Hill there as your two out-and-out -out second rows, but that's kind of it. We've got Laws, Jeffries, who may be a second row stroke back rows. Um, so, you know, not many second rows, but I don't know how he wants to use Courtney Laws, who I think probably will be the captain, I guess, but who knows. Then into the back rowers, and even with those Saracens players out, those Leicester players out, loads of great players to choose from here. Chick, the big number eight there from Newcastle. Tom Curry's back. Don Brandt's playing fantastically well for Harlequins. Ted Hill, I've been banging on about. This is a big moment for him. I think he really needs to show his full potential. Ludlam, he was in in the 2019 World Cup, had a good World Cup, but then went away a bit on that international scene and has grafted his way back in, put on a bit of bulk as well, I think, plays all over the back row. So great to see him get the nod here. Then we've got Sam Underhill, who's still a fantastic player, but all those Bath players, there's question marks over because, of course, they've had a terrible season, the worst ever for them. And Jack Willis, again, a grafting back row in there. So lots of hard men in the back row. Now into the backs and the scrum halves, the big story is Danny Kerr. I thought his England career was over. He's playing well enough to play for England, absolutely, but I didn't think it would happen. Why is he being called up? I don't know. Is it pure form? If so, great, but he's been playing like this for a while. Or is it some sort of you know, farewell swan song at Twickenham? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Then we've got Alex Mitchell, who is in unbelievable form at the moment. He really is probably, you know, one of the form nines in that premiership. Randall is playing well, although Bristol Bears haven't had the best season. Now, the two tens are Orlando Bailey and Marcus Smith. I wonder if Furbank might have been in the mix there if he hadn't been injured. He's one of Eddie Jones's real favourites. Then the centres, only four really I can see of, although they've been talking about Freeman trying at centre for a while, but I don't think that's going to happen um, anytime soon. We've got Atkinson in. Only one cap. He's a bit older, but he's probably in there as, you know, your big 12, if you like. Now, Tuolangi is out and Farrell's not available. What a chance for him. He's just got to start, really, if he's going to have a chance to go to Australia. He needs to show what he can do, that he can run hard lines at 12, as well as offload and have some good handling, which you know he can do. Dingwall is a fantastic player. He could probably do with being a little bit bigger, but, you know, that's nothing you can do about that. Everything else I love about his game can play 12 or 13. Well, Joseph, the youngster, that would be a massive call to put him into this game. And Joe Marchant's just playing the rugby of his life in his absolute prime there as an out and out 13. Who could maybe cover the wing? And we've got quite a lot of back three here. Arundel, we know all about him for London Irish and everyone is dying to see him pull on an England shirt and run out at Twickenham on a dry hot day with an open game. Him and the likes of Hassel Collins and Radwan, wouldn't it be great to see them charging around? Big Joe Thoknasiga is there, although many of you guys have been feeding back Bath fans saying he really should be packing more of a punch for his power, his size, 
he's a bit underwhelming at the moment, but you know, again, a big chance for him. Uh, Hassel Collins, I've mentioned. Freeman, I've mentioned. Johnny May and Jack Now are both in. They're both good players, but the other players in here, the other back three, I think have been playing better in the Premiership than them. It'll be really interesting to see how they stack up in training, if the youngsters actually you know, run rings around them or they can hold their own and will their experience pull through. I'm not quite sure about that one. Maybe it's a few too many back three potentially for me. And there's a few players that are injured who can't be picked. Liner, that's a real shame. He can't be picked. Sam Simmons, again, is going to be missing out there, which is a bit of a shame because others may take his spot. A few others, Sinclair Slade, Tuolangi, Watson still coming back from injury. So let's pick a team. This is the team I would play against the Barbarians. It's the best team I think that's available. I'm going for Rod, Blamire and Collier in the front row. I think you need Collier there to lock down that scrum. So you've got the youngsters of Rod and Blamire. So you've got a lot of excitement. Plus, you know, the old head of Collier, if you like, maybe not internationally, but certainly as a tight head prop, really knows what he's doing and deserves it through the form he's shown in the Premiership. Second row, I'd slot Laws into there. And jo alongside Johnny Hill, I think that's a really good combo. I'd like to see Laws move into the second row a little bit more because there's so many good back rows and we are a little short on second rows. I don't really want to start Charlie Yules. I don't think his form has merited it over the other guys there. Into the back row, it's a real shame some of these guys have to miss out, but Ludlam has to play for me. Just been fantastic for Northampton. Um, so I'm going six and seven, him and Tom Curry, although, you know, they're probably both better at seven, but Ludlam's probably slightly bulkier. Don Brandt's been unbelievable at eight, so I think it's an easy one for him to start at eight. And with him, Mitchell and Smith pulling the strings, it's going to be absolutely awesome. They could play some fantastic rugby. Um, I'm really excited. If a team close to this takes the field, I'll be excited. Nines is tight again, and it's a shame for one of these guys to miss out, but I think Mitchell's been on fire, so he gets to start. Kerr's been playing great as well, so he's on the bench, and Randall just about misses out, but I'll be happy with any combination of those three. Smith's the best 10 for sure. Uh, Bailey on the bench covering 10, so it'd be good to see him for a little bit. But, you know, the sort of rugby these guys could play could be amazing with this back line. Axon there as the pivot, the offloader. Marchant, the genius 13. And I've got the youngsters in the back three. Hassel Collins, Freeman and Arundel. I don't mind which way round Freeman and Arundel go, either on the wing or at fullback. But I think they are on form the best out of those bunch in the squad. Then the bench, as you see there, uh, Ted Hill covering second row as well, because you know, I think he deserves it. There may be a little light on second row, but I think you can just about get away with that. Jack Willis, I think, deserves a crack as well. And Dingwall on the bench, a good all-rounder. You could move March into the wing as well. Now, if I get a team like this, an exciting team like this, I'm going to be absolutely buzzing when I go to Twickenham on Sunday with my media pass. I think you could pick some, you know, old favourites of Eddie Jones, maybe Yules, maybe May and Noel on the wings. I might be a little less enthusiastic about it, but I'd love to know what your team would be out of this squad and how you think they're going to go. Anyway, guys, I will catch you next time.